Okay, the people are losing faith in the mainstream media and government officials because they're not idiots. They know that these media outlets and their backers, whether in the government or even in non-governmental institutions on international level and on regional levels are in control of the media outlets and the narratives, right? So there is this cartoonish way of portraying things, black and white. China is evil, Russia is evil, Iran is evil, Syria is evil, Venezuela is evil, etc., 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 and we are the good ones, so we have to save the world. No, it's not that simple. So each of these countries have interests, and each of these countries have done some uh, evil sum, I would say. Or they have pursued their national interests in order to reach their national interests. They have done uh, mistakes, or they have committed crimes here or there. So the people, when they watch the mainstream media, they can see only it's one-sided. And the mainstream media is the biggest and the strongest uh, outlets, right? Like the people are not able to go to television and see alternative uh, sources. That's why they're going to social media and other alternative, I would say, sources in order to gain, uh, to gather some information of what's going on around the world. Now, I would bring you a news that I'm sure that if you open your TV in anywhere around the world, you're not going to hear such news because they don't want you to know what the United States is doing in Syria. So I will share with you this article, which is thankfully published by the Zero Hedge. And the Zero Hedge, in my opinion, is a good source. And the, the title of the article goes, US expands with new base in oil and gas rich Syrian province. So surprise, surprise, always the United States is expanding in places where uh, there are gas fields or oil fields, or they're extracting the energy resources from there, whether it's in Iraq, Syria, Libya, name it, right? So who brought this news into the attention of the world? The Chinese state media. The Chinese state media is reporting based on Syrian war monitors that the Pentagon has expanded its presence inside Syria by establishing a new hub of operations in the northeastern province of Hasake this past weekend. The new military base was set up in the village of Nakara, three kilometers southwest of the city of Kamishli in Hasake province, said the Syrian Observatory of Human Rights, as cited by Chinwa. Now, I will show you the exact location of the base so that we know what are we talking about. So, this is the map of control over Syria, right? So this is Al Qamishli, okay? So as you can see, this entire uh, yellow area is uh, occupied by the United States through its proxy forces. And here the, you have all the uh, rich gas fields in this area, and it's they're all occupied by the United States. But here in Al Qamishli area, so this is a small area is still in the hands of the Syrian government, but still this is the Naqara. So the United States has established another post illegal post without invitation from the Syrian government, from, without a mandate from the UN Security Council, without anything. There is no legitimacy for them there, right? But still, zero coverage about this. And at the other hand, zero outrage. This is very important because uh, lots of people do not uh, really show any outrage regarding Syria because uh, of uh, the media tells them what to be outraged about. And there are also uh, certain, uh, I would say, people in the West, and I would call them the white liberals, uh, the, who are like virtual signaling about uh, Ukraine and in other uh, cases, Taiwan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and they only show interest when they are white, blue eye, white skin and blue eyed people are escaping and they want to receive them as refugees, right? Like I would, I would tell them, like guys, in Syria they're. Lots of people are white and blue and green eyes, so maybe that could help you. Maybe I could help you show some outrage uh, towards Syria, right? Because this area is very rich of wheat and very rich of oil and gas fields, and the United States is occupying this area at least since 2016. So let's go back to the article. <clears throat> So, 
uh, the biggest and main U.S. base in okay. The biggest and main U.S. base in Hasake province remains at Syria's Al Omar oil fields, which I mentioned that they have the biggest uh, um, uh, posts there because they want to uh, secure the Syrian oil. And this was the legacy of Trump. Trump designed this strategy to steal the Syrian oil. And he was very clear about it. And he said, we are there to steal the oil. But Biden was more cautious about uh, uh, his wordings. And the, he, he never said that we are there to steal the oil. Uh, basically, he says, we are there to fight ISIS. But we all know why are they in Syria. Now, the Syrian Ministry of Oil, uh, they made, they published a report. They detailed how much uh, revenues they have lost in the past years because of the American occupation of these oil fields in Syria. So the ministry says U.S. occupation forces and their mercenaries, referring to the U.S. backed Syrian Democratic Forces, still up to 66,000 barrels every single day from the fields occupied in the eastern region, amounting to around 83% of Syria's daily oil production. So 83% of Syria's oil production is being stolen by the United States. According to ministries data, the Syrian oil sector has incurred losses nearing about $105 billion since the beginning of the war until the middle of this year, so until the middle of 2022, as a result of the U.S. oil theft campaign. Imagine uh, Syria may need around $200 billion to reconstruct the country and the united states already stole 100 billion over 100 billion dollars from this budget so in four years around like in during this no around six years the united states stole 105 billion dollars from this area that means syria can and could reconstruct the entire country if the united states withdraws completely within around 12 years if the United States withdraws, which is uh, unfortunately not happening. And now we will, see, as we can see, they are uh, building new posts for them there. So presumably the establishment of a third main base inside oil and gas rich Hasake province is toward furthering efforts at denying Damascus its own energy resources. This is, I have mentioned it many times because they want to block the reconstruction process. They want to keep Syria a jungle. Okay, they say to Assad, you won this war. You want to stay president? Okay, we will keep you president over a piece of jungle. You're not going to be able to reconstruct. We're not going to allow you to reconstruct this country. That's why Syria has ha has has taken um, extreme, I would say, measures in um, aligning itself with Russia, especially in regards to now uh, in Ukraine, in Georgia, in Taiwan, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because Syria has no other option. Syria, in my opinion, uh, the only option for Syria left is for the United States to be defeated in Ukraine, and the, and 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 this empire starts to crumble and loses its influence around the world so that they can withdraw from Syria. Otherwise, how can you kick out the American occupation forces from Syria? And they're backed, as I mentioned, by at least 60,000 Syrian democratic forces who are armed and uh, trained by the United States, and they have the backing of Israel as well. So the Syrian and Russian governments have for years condemned Washington for its ongoing occupation of a sovereign country. China, too, has quickly back Damascus, also given the presence of Chinese foreign fighters, Islamic Uyghur extremists in particular. So there are uh, around 5,000 to 6,000 Uyghur fighters in Idlib, and they have their families, and all these kids of these families are being uh, like groomed, and they have been uh, educated uh, the Salafi schools, in Salafi schools, and also they have been uh, trained on arms in a very, very young ages. You can see uh, pictures of Uyghurs like six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. They, they are carrying arms and training in Idlib to fight against the Syrian government. Now, I would, I would like to play this short video for the Chinese uh, spokesperson about uh, how the United States is stealing the oil and gas of Syria and what China thinks about it, because 
uh, in my opinion, except for um, China, Russia, and Iran, nobody is talking about uh, how the United States is stealing the oil of Syria. Take a look. It is appalling to see the sheer scale of U.S. plundering in Syria, which has been going on as the country tries to emerge from a crisis that has dragged on for over a decade and a great humanitarian crisis facing its people. There is no greater injustice than the world's wealthiest country robbing one of the poorest. The U.S. intervened in the Syrian crisis, trying to start a color revolution. Its frequent military interventions in Syria have caused great civilian casualties and inimitable economic loss. It also displaced more than 12 million people. Just last week, the U.S. military launched another round of airstrikes in eastern Syria in a string of violations against Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. On top of that, the U.S. has imposed harsh economic sanctions on Syria, cutting the Syrian people off basic necessities of life, and blocking the country's economic development and reconstruction. Even today, U.S. troops still control Syria's oil, natural gas, and other state resources. They continue to occupy Syria's principal oil fields and have plundered more than 80% of the country's oil production. They have smuggled and burned Syria's grain stock, exacerbating the humanitarian crisis there. The U.S. should thoroughly reflect on its war-related crimes, stop its illegal military presence and operations in Syria, lift unilateral sanctions on Syria, stop stealing oil and grain from Syria. The U.S. should return to the Syrian people the freedom, wealth, and dignity that are rightfully theirs. I mean, I am really impressed by the wording of this uh, statement. It's very bold, I would say. It's very clear, it's very direct, and it puts, uh, it addresses the main issue, the main problem in Syria that is at the moment the American occupation of the uh, east of Syria, which is rich of wheat and oil and gas fields, and they are depriving Syrians of uh, their, their basic necessities. And if this is not a crime against humanity, I don't know what it is. And unfortunately, just go to any media outlet nowadays from the mainstream media, you will not see or hear anything about this issue. And therefore, the people are losing faith. And I think they already lost it. I think if there is any independent and objective poll, you will see, in my opinion, seven out of ten people uh, do not really trust the mainstream media and that is why the people are resorting to alternative sources that is why people are coming to places like syriana analysis where i am reporting to you from my living room when these media outlets are have they, they enjoy billions and they have big studios they have satellites they have uh, correspondents journalists like technicians all around the world and still, they think, this mainstream media, that we impose somehow a threat to their narrative because we are telling the truth. If truth doesn't have all this might and all this power, how can we uh, threaten the narrative of a media outlet uh, that has billions of dollars in its back if they are telling the truth? This is, uh, in my opinion... Uh, a fact that we have to acknowledge and we have to uh, support the independent journalists, citizen journalists, those who are doing a great job. And I know you know uh, lots of them. So guys, please share this video on, on your social media accounts. Please let the world know what the United States is doing in Syria is criminal. Uh, please let the world know that the United States has established a new post in Syria. Please let the world know that the United States is stealing the oil and burning the wheat of Syria. Please let the world know that Americans, the United States is imposing harsh sanctions and strangling the Syrian people. These are important um, information that the people, uh, it should be common knowledge in 
2022. And thanks to, um, I would say, uh, such online platforms, you're able to deliver uh, these messages to the uh, outside world. So I've been your host, Kirk Almasian of Syriana Analysis. If you're new, please subscribe. It's really important for me. And also hit the like button. It's free. And if you want to support my independent work, you can become a patron or all the means are in the description below. It's a really great help. And see you next time.